Are you on a statin medication? Let's talk about why coenzyme Q10 supplementation may be important for you. This is a very practical mini medical lecture. I'm Dr. Gina Sarioko, board certified in internal medicine and integrative medicine, meeting you here at the intersection of the two. So more than one in four adults over the age of 45 in the US are on a cholesterol lowering statin medication. So in my opinion, more than one in four adults should also then be on coenzyme Q10, otherwise known as ubiquinol or ubiquinone. These are different forms that you can find it in the body. So coenzyme Q10 is a vitamin-like compound. And we say vitamin-like because your body makes the vast majority of what it needs. You can technically find it in small amounts in food, but by and large, the body makes the large quantity that it needs. It's important for energy, and it's an important antioxidant in the body. So what exactly does coenzyme Q10 have to do with statins? The next two slides are very important. And if you understand them, you'll share my passion in spreading the news about coenzyme Q10 and statins. So first, let's understand what statins do and how cholesterol is formed. Here is the graphic that shows at the top acetyl coenzyme A. And when you go straight down, seven steps later, the body has made cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is not all bad. It's made, um, is that the, actually the backbone for steroid hormones made by the adrenal glands is the backbone of all the sex hormones, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, also bile production. But in some people, excess cholesterol may be a problem and they may be prescribed a statin. So statins function at the second step. They block an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. Once you block that enzyme, everything else in the pathway is also blocked and you get reduced cholesterol production. Now I want you to take a look all the way down at the bottom and then shift your eyes to the left. And what do you see there? Uh-oh, ubiquinol. So even though statins block cholesterol production, they sort of accidentally also block your body's production of ubiquinol, ubiquinone, coenzyme Q10. Do you see the problem here? And why is this important? Coenzyme Q10 is an integral part of your body's energy factory. The energy factory of each cell in the body is called the mitochondria. And within the mitochondria, there's the mitochondrial electron transport chain. This can be found in every single biology textbook in every high school in the US. So what is the output of this energy factory, this electron transport chain, it's an energy unit called ATP. So much like cars need fuel or electricity to run, each cell needs ATP in order to run. So here is the little graphic on how the electron transport chain works. And don't get caught up in the details. We have several protein complexes, these blobs, and at the bottom right, you see the ATP packet. Now, if you're astute, what you'll also see in the middle is the letter Q. And what does that stand for? Coenzyme Q10. This mitochondrial electron transport chain, this energy factory cannot function without coenzyme Q10. So do you see where my passion comes from? Statins sort of accidentally block the body's ability to make coenzyme Q10. And coenzyme Q10 is one of the key factors in your body's ability to make energy. Energy is vitality, right? You might be able to function okay with low energy, but wouldn't you rather have optimal energy? I like to tell people that normal is not optimal. Let's get you to optimal. So in the heart failure volume of a really important journal called Circulation, there was an article summarizing coenzyme Q10 in heart failure. And this graph comes from the same article. And look at the far right column, clinical benefits of CoQ10 in heart failure may improve cardiovascular mortality, may reduce hospitalization, may improve health-related quality of life, may improve functional status. A lot of this excitement came from a recent trial called the QSymbio trial, a beautifully done hundreds of patients double-blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled trial 
giving heart failure patients, who are all on statins, by the way, coenzyme Q10, 100 milligrams three times a day. And at the end of a two year interval, they found a 50% reduction in cardiovascular deaths. 50% reduction in cardiovascular deaths. Now, not all statin users are in heart failure, but what we're seeing here is this endpoint, this notion that if we replace what we've taken away from the body, this contributes to vitality. And in the case of heart failure, decreased deaths. Additional potential benefits of CoQ10, decreased muscle aches, decreased inflammation, decreased insulin resistance and diabetes. It protects the brain cell from oxidation. It decreases migraines, decreases cancer, wrinkles, fertility. All of these are benefits from CoQ10's energy production and antioxidant effects. Now, I just happened to take the liberty of listing some of the statin side effects. Now, this is on the FDA warning label of every prescription. Statins may cause muscle aches, pains, and fatigue, rarely liver inflammation, up to 27% higher incidence of blood sugar and diabetes, neurological concerns, which are usually reversible, dizziness, headache, and memory. Do you see any sort of correlation here between the two lists? Is it just possible that most of the statin side effects are because of its interference with the body's natural coenzyme Q10 production? Now, we have studies suggesting all of this, but in medicine, we never have enough research studies. So at some point, we just got to look at the basic science and go with it. Now, what about the practical clinical proof? What do I see in the clinic? I'm gonna give you three interesting examples. This first example is using this coenzyme Q10 blood test. Yes, there's a blood test for it. Most doctors don't know this. Coenzyme Q10 blood test can show your circulating levels of CoQ10. I usually like it around 1.0. What you see here in this first example is a 60-year-old gentleman who was given 20 milligrams of atorvastatin. And I checked his CoQ10 levels and they were quite low. Now he wasn't really interested in supplements or medications for that matter. So he was inspired to do a lifestyle change and we were able to decrease his atorvastatin down to 10 milligrams. And you can see here just by decreasing his statin dose that we see a doubling of his coenzyme Q10 level. In this second example, my favorite, 75 year old retired cardiologist. Now, Cardiologist tends to be big fans of statins. They think they should be put in the water. So he put himself on a statin medication, even though I didn't think it was that necessary. And you can see here over the course of four years, I really tried to convince him to at least take a CoQ10 supplement if he's gonna be on a statin. Now, traditionally doctors are trained that supplements are just expensive urine and there's really no data. He was a traditional doctor and did not want to listen to my suggestions until when he was about 80, he started to have some pretty significant weakness in his muscles to the point where he needed to use a cane for stability while walking. At this point, he finally conceded and allowed me to um, give him some CoQ10 supplements. I did give him some other basic nutrients as well. And you'll see here within three months, his blood levels of uh, CoQ10 did rise. And it usually takes about three to six months for the levels to rise in the tissue as well. And in fact, after about three to six months, he felt much better in terms of his muscle strength, his vitality, and he was able to actually ditch the cane and start walking again without a cane. So that was a clear example of how you might not feel the deficiency of statins right away, but over a period of years, they might just make you sort of deteriorate in terms of that vitality level. This last example is in an 80 year old patient of mine who was put on a statin by his cardiologist, incredibly low coenzyme Q10 levels. And he also developed Parkinson's disease. Now, the purpose of giving you this particular example, you see how his level at 2.0 was flagged as high. 
my point here is that there's really no such thing as a high CoQ10 level. Levels up to 8.0 have been tested to be non-toxic and safe. So don't get scared away by a high level. That just means you're on the supplement and it's doing its job. In Parkinson's disease, we do want to see a level of 2.0 or higher, and he was able to achieve that. So since CoQ10 levels um, are not commonly done, most doctors aren't taught about them, let me just give you a couple of tips. These are fasting tests, fasting for 10 to 12 hours. And also you need to make sure that the lab technician is processing the tube correctly. It needs to be chilled and wrapped in foil and protected from light. Now, don't worry, every single lab technician is supposed to know this information and has it easily available, but because this test is not done that often, they may forget. So do yourself a favor and just sort of bring it up when you're at the lab. Now I'm gonna take this opportunity always to insert a little bit of lifestyle recommendation. Um, you know, sometimes statins are necessary, but honestly, sometimes statins aren't that necessary. I've had many patients who've been able to prevent being on statins or get off of statins slowly by implementing lifestyle changes. The most important is going to be the soluble fiber. Soluble fiber helps to suck out that cholesterol. It's found in beans, lentils, oats, Brussels sprouts, broccoli seeds. In fact, I have one female patient who had an LDL of 175, the bad cholesterol, the LDL was quite high, and she refused to make any changes. She did not want to exercise, lose weight, take a medication, take a supplement, nothing. The only thing I could get her to do was to switch her unhealthy breakfast to steel cut oatmeal, which is high in fiber. And after two months, her LDL level went from 175 down to 135. It was an incredible improvement just from the fiber. Now that's um, not typical, uh, but definitely I'm glad we tried it and it's worth someone trying to see what sort of effects they can get from fiber. Now, psyllium husk <clears throat> is a form of soluble fiber and it's found in things like Metamucil over the counter. And studies have shown that one tablespoon of psyllium husk in water with your meal has been shown to be as effective as a low dose statin. So very reasonable to consider. Of course, replacing bad oils with good oils, olive oil, oil and tree nuts like almonds and walnuts, avocados, healthy fatty fish like salmon and sardines, and then movement, intermittent fasting, and weight optimization. I've had plenty of patients able to stop their statins when they were really empowered to make lifestyle changes. But in some cases, this just isn't possible or a statin is still needed, in which case here are some practical tips. So in my experience, 100 milligrams of CoQ10 at breakfast for most statin users is adequate to have a blood level over 1.0. Now remember the dosage is 100 milligrams three times a day if you have a history of congestive heart failure. Now supplements are not a regulated industry, so it's difficult to know which brands to trust. I use consumerlab.com as a resource. Now no one pays me to say this information. I do not get financial benefit in any way. I'm just letting you know what I tell my own patients. So Consumer Lab is a third-party testing company for safety, quality, and value. And based on their recent review, I recommend Doctors Best High Absorption CoQ10, which is ubiquinone, or Qnol Mega, which is ubiquinol, and this is commonly found at Costco. Various studies have used both forms successfully, so I wouldn't be too worried about which one you buy they've both been shown to be effective and get converted in the body effectively. Now, supplements are not covered by insurance, but if you're a smart shopper, you can get this down to about $10 a month investment in your health. What about side effects? I rarely see side effects at 100 milligrams a day, but at higher dosages, there have been reports of nausea, diarrhea, heartburn, and loss of appetite. And if that happens, it's easily resolved by splitting the dose morning and night, take it with the meal. Now, CoQ10 might also cause a sense of wakefulness. Of course, it's part of your energy factory. So don't take it at night if that bothers you, take it during the daytime. 
Various studies have suggested that CoQ10 might interfere with blood pressure and blood sugars in terms of making them too low. I've never seen this be a problem, but if you have very, very low blood pressure or low blood sugars to begin with, maybe just pay attention. My main drug interaction warning is with warfarin. If you are on warfarin or Coumadin, this is a blood thinner, make sure you work very closely with your doctor to adjust the dosage. Within two days of starting coenzyme Q10, you need to check an INR level and adjust accordingly. What about those who have been told they really need to take a statin, but they're intolerant? Some patients within the first few doses have horrible muscle pain and brain fog and just cannot tolerate it. I think it's reasonable in these patients to try a CoQ10 supplement daily for three months. Make sure your vitamin D level is good over 30. This has been shown to uh, help with statin tolerance as well. And then once you've boosted those levels for three months, try starting the statin again at half the dose. Remember that supplements are a little bit like fertilizer. If you fertilize a rose bush, you don't get beautiful roses the next day. It takes a while for the rose bush to integrate those nutrients and flower. Humans actually aren't that different. Okay, so in summary then, a reminder, coenzyme Q10 production goes down with statin use. It's an accidental side effect. And this is detrimental to the body because coenzyme Q10 is at the heart of your energy production in each cell. You cannot make ATP energy without CoQ10. So what we're really talking about here is just replacing a deficiency that's caused by a medication. So congratulations. Now you know about why I'm recommending that everyone take 100 milligrams of CoQ10 with their statin prescription. Sharing is caring. Statistically, 25% of your friends need to know this information. Continue, um, consider clicking subscribe if you'd like to hear about more future videos. And perhaps I'll see you on Facebook or Instagram. I like to share intermittent um, health tips on mind, body, and spirit. Be well.